Hello. How's it going? Everything on here? Let me see. Kind of rearranged, so I was worried I'm going to bump something. How's it going? How was your weekend? Uh, first off, uh, before we get into it, if this is not live for you, just know you can fast forward to whatever part you're looking for. Um, if you want to see the chat underneath the video, I think below it will say show chat if you want to see what we're talking about. Um, and a liking, commenting, and subscribing really helps to keep the stream going. This is pretty much a nonprofit thing. And if you want to support me, there's ways to do that in the description as well. So today we're sewing Char the, oh my God, I saw Charlie's name and I was going to say Charlie, um, I was going to say uh, the Charlie Kafton. <laughs> Hi Charlie, how's it going? Good evening. Um, I'm Sarah Me, by the way, and I usually just do live sewing streams and occasional uploads, and you can find those in playlists and things. But today we're going to be sewing part four of the Kelly Anorak. And my version is lined, which they sell an, a lining expansion pack for. And I'm also going to be waxing it with auto wax to make mine waterproof. So that's kind of an extra step. And because of that, I did make a couple of modifications. I removed my shoulder seam so there was less seams up here for you know the water to get into. And I also changed the pocket design because I just wasn't a fan of that pocket design. And I also felt like waterproofing patch pockets was kind of um, a little bit risky. So <clears throat> I may drop in welt pockets. So if you want, you know, how to do that, just watch the part one video. We get right into that. And soon there will be the pattern pieces I used in the Patreon. They'll just be a free, well, free for Patreon patrons. So, so yeah, I did make some fit modifications, but they aren't altering the sewing. I'm kind of losing track of now. It's been so long. <laughs> it's been like a few weeks now. Um, and I go over all that. Like I have like a couple of pattern adjustment videos and a cutting and then we cut it out. So the main thing you're going to see me doing differently is that I'm sewing it at smaller seam allowances because I find it to be tidier and a little easier to do all the curves. So I trimmed all my five eighths down to three eighths, except that the neck and the hood, I did quarter inch. So that's all. So just make sure you follow your seam allowances. So, hey, here's a little, hey, Glenn. <laughs> hey, Allison. Yeah, no worries, Allison. Yeah, you got to work. I know. I stream during the day for a lot of folks, so it's just kind of hard to pick a time. <laughs> I kind of might think, I'm, I'm, I always say I'm, gonna, I'm thinking about doing different times, but because we pretty much secured a new location um, in the same building, I'm just going to be moving down and kind of um, downsizing a bit. I think this is going to be really great because it, in a way, after doing the poll with the Patreon patrons on what they're want to see their money go toward it makes me feel so much more behind like I've always been behind the live streaming thing it's what I started with because I really believe in this format it's really nice to see you guys do too because I do get those messages that are just like you know just keep sewing why are you talking so much but the live thing is really interactive and you can ask questions and this is really um why I did this so you can comment and be a part of the process it's not for everybody but i love it so um i feel like this whole change going into this smaller space is going to be dedicated to streaming and i'm going to be focusing my time there on just the streaming aspect and i'm really excited about that so so yeah i wanted to show this um i know my sister i'm pretty sure my sister does not watch me live ever and it's her birthday coming up and she's um, an avid journaler. Like she's been, ha she's had a journaler since she could practically write. She has a lot of journals and she's, uh, journals every day. And so she's really into things like this. And so it's her birthday coming up. And so I made, I got her a bunch of supplies. I don't know if she needs them or has them, but then I made, yeah, I made little bin bins. And, um, I just wanted to show you guys because I can't really photograph it yet. And then I'm gonna make a lid, but here's the outer fabric. It's a little overexposed, sorry guys. They fit a certain way too. I'm actually gonna change this one because I want it to be the same size as this one so it fits a little better. I don't know why I didn't come up with the fact that these two, I don't know, it's just a little tight right there. So I actually already cut this one out and so I'm gonna put one right there. And then the fabrics I used, you guys, this is kind of funny. Can you see they're all like slightly different colors? This little cross hatch on the inside. It's like a buttery yellow, green, red, and blue. 
So I was at World Market. Here in the States, we have something called World Market. It used to be Cost Plus. I haven't been shopping in so long. Like just, I feel like I've gone to the grocery store, I've gone to the eye doctor, and I've picked up to-go food in the last, like before Christmas. <laughs> like I, I don't ever go in anywhere. And I got new glasses and I was feeling kind of frisky and I wanted to get my, my sister some things for her birthday and, and my niece and my mom. So I went to World Market. I went to World Market for something else too. And um, they have napkins there that are a dollar each and some that are 50% off. Wait, some that are, the 50% off ones are dollar each and some of them are $2 each. And so I got so many really great prints and things. So these were a dollar each napkins and um, like two of them was a half a yard of fabric. So I felt like it was such a good deal. I got a bunch of napkins. So I'm doing things like that with them. <laughs> yeah, Michelle, that's awesome. Thank you for saying that. The weather has turned. Hey, Malin, how's it going? <laughs> Yay, streaming! You can never have too much stationery. And I got her a little book reading light. She reads a lot of books, and um, which I'm kind of rethinking the book light. I bet, I just kind of got it as an impulse thing, but it was cheaper than these erasable highlighters. So go figure. These, this is transparent tape and they're neon. So I don't know what the point of it being neon is if they're transparent. <laughs> she loves washi tape. I mean, and this is creepy. So I had to get that. So and we'll see, these are gel pins. And then did, did you all have one of these growing up? <laughs> Well, I thought this thing was so cool. <laughs> no one really likes using it, but it's funny. And I got my niece a, a more sophisticated, like, new modern work version. And then these are mood color-changing pencils. They're all just kind of silly things for her. It's really about this. And then I'm making a lid. So I'm replacing this. And so it took me a long time to figure out what to get her because I had other ideas. And then you know how you have those ideas and then you don't do it? And then you're like, oh, now it's not, I don't have enough time to do that. And so this popped into my head. Then as soon as it did, I kind of just hit the ground running. I'm actually thinking about having a bin bin class. And um, because I feel like so many people were hype about that pattern and bought it. And I don't think a lot of people have used it. And I don't want it to be one of those things where you're like, oh, I want to do it. But it's kind of like you see all those numbers and blank spaces and you're like, eh, I don't know. It's really not hard. And I was thinking I could just put together something like this, like, oh, you can make this little nesting stationary set in my class. You know what I mean? You don't have to do any of the math. <laughs> so I think that's been great. And then she can, you know, she can use these separately. She doesn't have to use them for how they are. So we'll see. I can't wait to replace this one. So I actually made two of these before stream today. They're so quick. Once you have everything cut out, so anyway, I just wanted to show you guys. So how are you guys doing? Yeah, well, I know I bet she has a book like Beverly. I just kind of rethunk the quality of this one. I'm kind of like, hmm, you know, because I've had book lights too, and they're just like hit and miss. So <laughs> what are you guys making? What are you guys doing? I was listening to the, the Love to Sew podcast before. Uh, started today on knits that it was like a rebroadcast that I hadn't caught and I have to say I was so nervous during a couple parts of it I was like oh gosh some of my philosophies are gonna get shot down in this episode and they believe the same things as me so that felt really like okay yeah see I'm not the only one that thinks that you know hey Ray how's it going yeah exactly I was thinking like a bin bin zoom class I think it would be really fun you know and then you'd get something out of it and you won't be afraid to make bin bins. <laughs> and the and to be clear, the pattern part that I'm using of the bin bin is the tray. So there's like a lid slash tray pattern that I added um, as a bonus when I released all the videos. I added it as to the original bin bin pattern. And that's what I'm using. I'm not actually using the the whole like huge bin bin thing. So I'm just using all the little I just made a bunch of lids basically, or trays, which I kind of discovered late. And it's because I, like I even use them here. You saw these were my trials, you know. <laughs> these are my first ones I made. These actually look nicer sewing. I have to say, tighter woven fabric, so much easier than that loosey goosey stuff. You saw that stuff was like shredding before my eyes. Um, maybe I should have pre-washed it, but I bought it yesterday and sewed it yesterday. You know, YOLO. So, all right. So, 
How's the lighting? Oh, it's not too bad, huh? Not too bad. All right, so this is it. This is it. This is it. We're gonna bag the lining on the Kelly Anorak today. I'm super excited about it because today my Anorak is going to look like an Anorak without um, all the crazy threads hanging off of it and everything. So, <sighs> oh, nice, Beverly. And you made it, uh, it, you did all that on a muslin, nice. Which one is the Celestra? She has so many patterns, so many good ones too. You're making the Jackson pullover? Yeah, I bought that one. Actually, I saw you comment on there and I bought the pattern because of that, Malin. I already have a t-shirt pattern, but I thought it would be a great way to do it, so. You know, just like have that, have it as a pattern so then I can do a stream on it or something. I really want to get more into knits. It's just time. <laughs> it's just time. I love knits. I just, um, I don't know. I just, I just love my industrial machine. You can sew knits without a serger or a zigzag, but it is nicer and a little better, you know, for a lot of projects. A lot of things I can get away with it. But like after making the video on do you need a serger, literally the next day I was sewing a pair of pants and I had to have the serger because that fabric was so like uh, dropping stuff everywhere. Hey, Walter, how's it going? Oh, okay. Now hold up there, Michelle. No, I'm <laughs> just eating. But yeah, you're right. I actually really like the underwear I made and I need to just get better at it, you know? Oh, cool. Nice, Malin. That one's called the Jackson, yeah. That's awesome, Beverly. Yeah, the linen can be, just remember to, remember to stay stitch all those edges. The linen gets gross, you know? P perfect example, so. Okay, so um, the one thing I noticed about this is I never, remember when we put the zipper on here, I didn't do any top stitching because it didn't say to do any top stitching. So I didn't do any top stitching. But the thing is you, I think like this right here would be top stitched, this center front seam on the body of the jacket next to the flap seam right here, right here. So um, this is the right front as you wear it, right? So here's the zipper. I'm looking at the screen to make sure you can see. Um, but I don't see that anywhere in the pattern ever. So I'm gonna do it before we bag the lining. Um, but then I noticed, I looked through this and I did not read it word for word. So I, I may have missed it, but I would think they would have showed a picture. So I was looking closely. I see this picture right here. Do you see, there is top stitching on the flap, but then I don't ever see when you do that. And, and personally, I wouldn't put it on the flap. Um, I would put it on the body of the jacket. I think that that's a better um, place for it. It also means that then you're holding all of the seam allowance towards the body of the jacket. Stitching here on the, the flap, I'm not sure what the purpose of that would be. So first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna top stitch mine right here along that center front seam on both sides. So um, if you don't wanna do that, you don't have to do that, <clears throat> but I'm going to. And I think on this fabric, it's great. It stabilizes it even further, so. More computer work, Walter. <laughs> oh, really, Beverly? Uh oh. Oh, binding, really? <laughs> I've never heard of Sinclair patterns. God, I wish I had a secretary. You know what I mean? Like, I wish I could just say, um, Siri, take this note. Oh, God. Okay, my phone didn't turn on. Oh, hmm, a pattern for a v-neck dress you can use linen with and add bishop sleeves, like a pullover dress. What's the, okay, here's the v-neck, but what's going on down here? All right, so I'm gonna just start top stitching. You can tell me more about it. Let me make sure I, I think I tested my, oh yeah, I did test my bobbins right there. And the lighting, everything sounds good. I actually moved the ironing board today so that the microphone won't be so faded. Okay, so I'm just gonna open this up and move my little pin cushion here out of the way. So I'm just pressing all of uh, this towards the 
opening of the jacket, but the seam allowance on the body towards the body. So you can see mine has a lot of fraying because it's the linen. And this is this this project's been sponsored by Hearts Fabric. They didn't sponsor the whole thing, but they, in my opinion, they they sponsored a lot. So if you and I forgot to mention, you can see up here, um, right here. Oh, so bright! My hands are so bright. There's a little discount here if you want to shop for anything on their website. They provided a stipend for the materials, so I could get whatever I wanted, and the pattern, which is awesome. So. <laughs> <clears throat> Oh, cool, Malin. You're already making, you are on it, Malin. Okay, so I'm just going to top stitch this. I do admit, like, it is going to get a little thick at some of these seam junctures, so make sure your machine can handle that. I just realized maybe I should take more care. So I'm going to have to go through this casing that we haven't even top stitched down yet. So today I hope to get through the entire uh, attaching the lining, the sleeves, the neckline, the hem, the center front. And then on Saturday, we'll do the, I'm trying to decide, do I wanna go, I'm just not gonna back stitch down there just in case I need to remove a little of this, but I'm pretty sure you don't. Uh, Saturday we'll work on the snaps, the casing. I may do the casing today, but we'll see how long, how fast this goes. Snaps the casing what else um that's it right and then i wax it oh v-neck dress that isn't a wrap you can take the wrap out you can just um put the fabric the pattern on the fold where it overlaps at the center front All right, so let's do this side. So same thing, I'm just opening all this out, pressing the seam allowance towards the body. What is this? I see it pulling from over here. It's like way over here. Where's this thread? I kind of want to know now where is it coming from? Oh well. Sometimes it's just better to pull the thread, you know, like from the other side. There it is. So you don't have like a broken thread you can't trim down any further. Yeah, I mean, I don't know if you have a pattern already. That could be an option though. I'm trying to think of a V-neck. The Maya Sotis, uh, if you don't use the placket, you put it on the fold, has like a kind of a v-neck. And that would, that pattern would be good with a bishop sleeve since it has such a big full sleeve. So when I, when I'm fussing at right here is that, ugh, it's bright, uh, um, so when I get to these like seams right here where there is a yoke seam right here going into the seam here, it's easy to keep pulling and then it kind of over rotates the seam this way. But what I really want is it to be straight up and down. You know, I want all of this, I want it to stay straight, you know, the, the yoke's perpendicular to the center front there. But then um, I just don't want to pull it out and have it be the rolling the zipper because then it's, it's kind of pulling to explain that what you need is it's pulling this up and you need this all to be right on top of itself a little thick right there too all right <laughs> i've seen that walter it's hilarious Hi, <laughs> Sydney. How's it going? You're driving to work for a few hours. Oh, yeah, yeah, Beverly. The Acacia, that's, um, 
melt blank slate. God, you guys, speaking of blank slate, you know that cozy slipper pattern? I told you that was my sewing fail last year. Um, I wish I would have known this when I made the um, year end review. <clears throat> oh, out of stock, dang. That's a bummer. <laughs> um, I cannot find, I could not find the Sherpa in the, like, I wanted, I wanted something soft and cozy and polar fleece. I just didn't want to buy a yard of polar fleece. And the only one I really found was in Canada that I, that I thought would be good because it wasn't too thick. And it was like $20 to ship, you know, one yard. You know, I'm like, okay, do I really want to spend $50? on lining two pairs of slippers I'm remaking. Oh, Megan Nielsen, thank you. I'm sorry. Yeah, Megan Nielsen. Um, Blank Slate had the free pattern, not the acacia though. So uh, I spent, I actually got really exasperated over it. I, it was so hard. I, kept, I would find Sherpa and then the reviews would be like, uh-uh. And the other times it would be from China or I just couldn't find it. I finally did find it and I'm really hoping it's fine, but we'll see. I don't even think they've shipped it yet. So what a saga. <laughs> and maybe it was the way I sewed those and that's why they're not stretching, but it doesn't say in the pattern to use four-way stretch. It just says, I used Sherpa, here's an affiliate link. And if you clicked that, I actually went and opened the whole pattern up back on the computer, opened it, clicked it, it goes to an out of stock fabric on Amazon. So. Ah, oh, gosh, what a pain in the butt. So I, I think like, I'm real, I'll be glad when that pattern's behind me. <laughs> Sydney, it's fine. It's fine. And you know, I'm actually, I like the idea. Sid, for me, Sydney, like when something like that, this isn't for everybody. A lot of people are just like, oh, I want to, I'm done with that. I'm not going to go back to it. For me, it's kind of like, I'm not a competitive person except with myself. And so it brings out that side in me and I'm just like, I must prevail. <laughs> and it's kind of becomes this quest and I need to figure out what I did wrong and what I could have done better. And so um, <clears throat> not everything tickles me like that, but a lot of things do. And this one is. And so I'm definitely going to change the pattern where it joins at the top of the foot so it's not that slit. Because remember how hard it was to turn that? I'm just going to make that little top a, a right angle. And then that way it's a smooth circle there. And I think that'll help. But maybe the way I sewed it prevented enough stretch for them to get it on their little kid's feet. So, you know, I don't know. So anyway. Okay, so we have our top stitching in here. Looks pretty good. And now we're going to, we're going to iron. So, um... Make it make sure one and a half inch. So we're gonna press up the body of the jacket and the sleeves one and a half inches. And I think that this is helpful, but I also think that you may end up having some um, finding that um, your jacket won't fold right precisely there. So don't sweat it too much. But it's a good guide. I had to put the um, iron over. You know what? I'm gonna move my dirt. I'm right-handed. <laughs> I want the iron right here. Okay. So I'm going to press up this bottom hem one and a half inches right here. Once I get it going, I'll get the hang of what that one and a half inches looks like too. I tend to get off a little bit after a while, you know, <laughs> I have to check in a little bit. So I think that we will be finished with this on Saturday. I won't. I won't record, like I won't be live waxing the ja the entire process of the jacket because I know it's going to take a long time. But I I will do, I will start. Uh, I want it. At least it's 
Like, I was like, oh, I asked my husband, what's the weather forecast? Because <laughs> he's into the weather, so I asked him. And um, he's like, oh, it's going to be sunny for the for the foreseeable. Maybe we get rain next week. And I was like, well, of course we're not getting rain because I'm finishing a raincoat, you know? And um, then I was like, that's good because maybe by the time the rain is there, I will have a finished raincoat. You know? very exciting does this sound better over here do I need to move it closer Is that better now it's just like I used to always have it like this but when I added the other machine I had to move it so yeah if I if this is one of my last streams before I move I'm assuming I'm going to be able to move. I kind of have some doubts it's going to be ready. <laughs> Internal building drama. Someone is occupying that office. <laughs> Not my drama. <laughs> so I'm just going to be ready to move and hopefully it, you know, it happens. Let's double check this one and a half inch here. That's a little bit more. It's so hard not to uh, keep like trim all those threads. I can't wait for this to look nice, you know. So one of the things I am concerned about with this step of the bagging of the lining is the lining up of my neck seam and my hems and my hood. My hood's not going to be as critical because it's a curved edge. So it'll kind of hide any major discrepancies. I think that this folds right here. Well, I'm not too pleased that my flap is a little above my zipper there. See that? Womp womp. <laughs> it's growing moss. Oh. <laughs> oh, so, um,. So Nancy, uh, when I told my landlord that I think I'm going to move out, he offered me a smaller space in this building. So I don't have to move far, but I have a lot of stuff I need to downsize because I have big tables in here, tons of shelving from the factory. You, if you guys knew how many of those um, crate bins I have, you'd, you'd laugh because I, I probably easily have 50 or 60 of them. Cause that's how we organized production and they're just empty. I have a method of storing them and they're all on the top shelves of the, of these empty shelves. <laughs> so I need to, uh, I just need to find, find, and then sell a couple of machines. I just, it's time. I really need to, um, do it. Cause I don't want to bring it out to my house and then have to get rid of it later. I have the space out there, but it's too far away. And then I'd have to haul it all. So I'm hoping that I can get rid of it here. So I just need some dedicated time to do that. And I'm hoping that I also get to set up my stream. I kind of want to look at this um, fold edge here right now. And make sure that it's folding okay. I love the speckles in this fabric. I don't know how it looks on camera. Oh, it looks pretty terrible, huh? Yeah, exactly, Nancy. Hey, Elizabeth, how's it going? Yeah, I'm excited. We're going to do the bagging today. So this right here, though, this concerns me right here. I think what I'm going to have to do, you see this? I think what I'm going to have to do is um, either draw this up. Hmm, I should have probably looked at that before. I top stitched it, huh? Because maybe I could... Uh, get rid of that right here I forgot about this little issue can we iron it out oh we might be able to iron it out all right well that was lucky I 
iron the bleep out of it. That's what they said on Love to Sew today. <laughs> iron the bleep out of it. That helped. That helped. <laughs> I want to look at this. I want to look and make sure that my flap here is even. It looks pretty good, actually. I'm surprised. It didn't visually look this, um, correct. So I was making sure. All right. Let's try the other side now. Um, this side, we don't really have any. Okay, so now we're going to do our sleeves. Lock this one in. I really want my, I don't like seeing that little pucker there. I want my sleeve to be um, the same, but you know, it is, isn't getting attached to the sleeve. It is hanging loose. I could have done this off camera, but I feel like um, I want to don't skip things like this because then um, people might skip it if they don't see it being done, you know? And I think it's a good idea, even if uh, maybe your sleeve doesn't end up folding right here because of whatever, maybe some tiny little discrepancies that piled up along the way. <clears throat> it's also a good opportunity to start looking over your jacket a little closer in areas that you probably haven't looked at in a bit just to make sure everything's cool before you put it all together. All right. So did any of you that are patrons, <clears throat> did you guys look at that graphic? I thanked you guys for doing the poll. You probably didn't really look at that post, but I put this graphic in there that I thought was so interesting. So the day I made that poll, I was looking at my analytics and I was looking at it for lots of things. You can look, you can see like what time of day people look at your videos and yada, 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 like all kinds of stuff. And, um, but I was looking at the revenue. And so for a long time, the like top few patterns that were in the videos was the Caroline pajama top and bottoms, um, ginger jeans. Oh gosh, what was the other one? What was the other one? It might've been the tea house dress actually. And, um, that has been consistent for a long time in views and in monetization. And then this fall, we had the great sponsorship with Helen's Closet, which really boosted views and the revenue, ad revenue of those videos. I think I made like $18 on those videos, which was pretty great for the year, for like total. And, um, and usually the Caroline beats it. See you, Charlie. <laughs> She's whining. Hey, Derek, how's it going? So, but the thing that surprised me that I hadn't seen is that um, in the fall, hey, Dina, in the fall, uh, Cash Moret generously shared a link to the Ames Jeans videos in their newsletter. I had actually opened that newsletter in the morning and didn't even see I was in it. I was caught up in whatever else they were announcing and I didn't scroll down far enough. <laughs> I didn't know it went further. And my friend was like, oh, look at you. And I was like, what? So I, was, I thought, well, that's awesome. And um, so, and then I didn't really look at my analytics for a long time. And then when I looked at them that Friday, I made the poll, Fame Sheen's number one in revenue. So that was such a really great 
thing to see because that amount of support wasn't even a sponsorship. It was just her sharing it. That's key. So that's the kind of thing we need to go for as far as getting the word out because that kind of thing, you can tell it touches more people. So I thought I'd share that with you guys. The difference when someone shares it, the fact that that happened in September and it knocked the Caroline pajamas out of the water, which has never like gotten any like coverage, but it's my number one video. I don't know why people just find that one and they need that one the most or something. I don't know. Maybe it's one of my older ones. I don't know, Beverly, maybe. Maybe. I'm going to come up with something to ask certain people, you know. It was already really nice she did, you know. Okay, so is my neckline on this side kind of warped? It doesn't seem as warped as this one did. So I kind of want to... Uh, put a little stay stitch, another stay stitch in this neckline right now and kind of pull it up a little bit. I don't know if I can, but we'll see. Because I kind of stitched on top of my other stitching. So I'm just going to pull to kind of uh, keep it a little bit tighter through here. Since that bias, mine's on the bias there because of the... Um, <clears throat> I removed the shoulder seam. And I shouldn't have probably put the the back on the fold. Well, that's not what I mean to say. I probably should have put the grain line of the center front on the length grain, rather the center back. Because the center back being on the bias would actually have a lot of benefit to the fit. Well, I can't find my end here. Why can't I find my end? I just want to do this really quick and then we'll get to the bagging. Okay. Just like that. All right, let's do it. Okay, so we're going to sew first along these two center front edges, right sides together. You're lining to your um, jacket. And you're going to sew it at your seam allowance that you've been using. I've changed mine, so that's why I'm not saying what it is. And then your lining is going to be shy, <clears throat> whatever your seam allowance is. Oh, thank you. It's funny, I just need to rotate it. So, um,. My, since my seam allowance has been trimmed down to three-eighths of an inch, my lining is going to be three-eighths of an inch above that, like that. Yours is probably five-eighths of an inch above. And so just note that it does not line up. Do not force it to line up. Um, and then we're going to sew down the, both these center fronts, but we're going to stop three inches away from this edge. So I'm just going to put a little tiny notch there as a reminder. All right. Remember to line it up on the seam line. Perfect example, you know, when you have this little angle coming in there. Oh, really, Adina? You made them for work, where? That begs so many questions. Oh, thanks, Ray. I don't think I liked it yet. I always try and like it too. Let's see, I'm gonna like it. Here we go. Someone told me to do that. I was like, that's true, I should. Why shouldn't I like my own things? <laughs> I saw someone like, uh, I think it was Mac Make Space, um, say she likes all of her own Instagram posts. <laughs> I love that. All right, so I'm just looking at all these little threads and just trying to get them into the seam allowance rather than them being in my seam just so it's less work later that's crazy that it's a directional mic that it makes such a big difference <clears throat> sorry my my i just haven't talked much i guess <laughs> 
I need to start singing in the car on stream days or something so my voice is warmed up, but I just don't do that. I actually don't listen to music. Singing to Fresh Air, the show or something, or <laughs> my audio book. Okay, so where's my little notch? So remember, stop three inches above. This is all going to, like, it's going to be really funky. I'm just going to tell you straight up, doing this is kind of um, fun. Doing, doing this is kind of makes everything seem like it's not going to work, but it does. And there's other ways to do it without any hand sewing. In fact, I had to do that in high school. Pretty sure that was the, the tailoring class. We had to sew it so that um, there was no hand sewing whatsoever. Maybe that was in college. You know, that might have been in college, actually. The jacket, I had to do the jacket in high school. I just had to do a line jacket. That's what it was. I just had to do a line jacket. It didn't have to do, didn't care. She didn't care how you did it. Um, in college, though, you had to do a line jacket with, um, with no hand sewing. And the way you would do that is you wouldn't do it through the neckline like we are here. You would do it through the sleeve underarm seam or the side seam. And then you edge stitch it shut. So it's definitely not a classy tailoring look. It's more of a crossover between, you know, doing a, some sort of tailoring with a ready to wear type of thing. <laughs> That's awesome, Adina. I love it. I've been independent for so long. I've never worked in pajamas. In fact, occasionally when I catch myself still wearing clothes like that, I jump up and I get dressed because I feel kind of like, I feel kind of funky, like kind of sleepy funky, you know? Right, Nancy? No hand sewing is the goal. So I'm just lining it up down here and making sure it's all going good. It is. The one thing I'm nervous about personally on this process, besides the... Um, neck seams matching up and the hems matching up is that I remembered to trim my seam allowance down on every edge so that I can be consistent. Oh, I got to stop three inches away. There we go. I caught that in time, didn't I? All right. And now we're going to understitch. Pretty sure we understitch the lining. That's what I would do. I'm on page uh, 22 of the lined instructions. Yeah, we're going to understitch lining to facing seams only. Huh? Lining to, maybe this is where that, to facing seams only, like this? Oh. Let me make sure. Press seams towards the zipper. Oh, okay. I would have understitched on the lining. So I'm glad I read that. And yay me, I don't have to change thread color. Yeah, right, Adina? Exactly. Okay, so we're going to, um, let's just, I'm gonna press this on the iron because of that interfacing, it's actually kind of pushing away from me. It's a little trickier to press. So we're going to press this seam here toward the zipper this way. And now I wish I had my ironing board. <laughs> now I wish I had the ironing board out. I almost set it up. Then I was like, oh, this actually, this configuration works really good. I don't need it. Let's see what's in there. Got my sleeve. All right, I'm not gonna, it'll be fine. I'm just gonna iron it. <laughs> yeah, 
you were telling Jamie that I was like, whatever floats your boat. My husband could do that too. When he had to work at home, when he worked for a, a company that was out of the country, he would just wear lounge clothes all day and I just couldn't do it. But he also did not like working from home. Now he really likes it. Now it's a different age now with Zoom and meetings. Um, so I can't say it's just because we, he loves the house because we lived kind of in a similar situation when he had to work at home last time too. And I was always giving him pointers. I'm like, nope, nope, do not answer the phone. <laughs> If we were at work at the office, we would not be answering the phone. So you do not have to answer the phone during the day. And that was really hard for him to learn. <laughs> well, you'll learn because people will just take advantage of you being home. All right. Let me pull this sleeve out of the way. I'm kind of just pulling the sleeve over so it's not this big bumpy mess. I'm pressing my... You're like done probably because you have an ironing board. I'm not a big fan of all these threads, you know? Okay. Just making sure I pull it apart really good too. All right, now we're gonna understitch it to these faces. Bring the microphone with me. I love how you put a nice top for video call meetings. <laughs> I see those memes. I guess they're true then, huh? <laughs> All right. So I'm stitching on the jacket, but I'm not going to stitch this. I feel like there could be a lot more instruction right here because it's going to be really tempting for people to stitch this little three inch section. Don't do that though. It's a lot of jacket. Don't let it pull off the table and drag. Don't catch anything else under there. I can lower the camera if you need. Maybe I will for the other one. Remember that sweater I wore what, one day and I was talking about the, it was part uh, Angora? Oh, I am still finding Angora on this jacket. I must have wore it um, at some point with this jacket. All right, so I'm gonna just find my other side now and just start without moving it out from underneath the needle. Cause I don't know about you guys, but yeah, it's, it's like so frustrating. And I also like my machine, it's probably a good idea. Maybe I could uh, just make sure I'm not like have oil. Cause I don't sew on my machine every day anymore. And so sometimes a little bit of oil just kind of seeps out. I should have done that probably early on. All right, so now I'm doing this side here. Get rid of this random thread. And you too. Sometimes I just pull a little bit so that when I trim it, it sucks the rest back in. <laughs> I know, Michelle. <laughs> oh my gosh, Nancy. Oh, I bet. Yeah, those big bulky things. It turned out great though. I love that. I loved how um, rustic in a good way. It is. Wait. What am I feeling under there? Huh, nothing. I thought I was feeling um, a layer of this lining. I have a chest pocket on my lining. That's what that is. That was one of the mods I did. Mod. Features. I didn't really modify it. Where's that? Oh, there it is. Okay. 
All right. See, now I don't have to pull it out from underneath and touch the head of my machine. Okay. Now we're gonna put our sleeves together, and um, you know, let's let's take a look at my pattern table. Oh yeah. Okay. That's not gonna work. I'll do it at the iron. <laughs> Nancy, that's why it was a toile or a muslin, as I like to call it. All right, so this part, I have done this uh, thing wrong many times where I got the sleeve twisted. It is pretty easy to do. Let me make sure I can see what you guys are seeing. Let me see if I can, I can't really raise the camera up any higher. So, get your jacket straightened out, right? Uh, I think... I think when you do something like this, making it logical to you is the most important thing. So I'm going to turn all this right side out. My sleeves are right side out. And so let's just look at this, right? So we have these two sleeves. Neither one is twisted. So we have this seam right here and we have this seam right here. And we're going to put these together, right sides together, all right? And wait, let me see how they, they, how do you do it? Oh, they do do it inside out, cool. Yeah, let's do it inside out, let's do it inside out. Okay, let's turn it all inside out. I remember one time being so careful that I didn't twist my sleeves and I still twisted them. And that's haunted me to this day, you know? It's like the one time, one time I was a teenager, I was in a parking lot and I'm not kidding, there was nobody else in the parking lot. There were like a few cars but they were really far away. And I was probably just there like hanging out listening to music, you know, because teenagers have no place to go sometimes, so that's what they do. <clears throat> My daughter does this too. Um, I was sitting there and when I went to leave, I just pulled straight forward through the space and I went over a curb, like the, the, the thing that your car bumps up. And I'm not kidding, before I started, I looked all over the parking lot, there wasn't a single curb, not a single one of those little barrier, stone barriers, but at my spot. <laughs> And ever since that, because I got over it and I was like, oh no, well now I have to like continue. And I was just like this old little Subaru. It wasn't an all wheel drive Subaru like now. It was, this was like probably from the 80s or something or 70s. So that's haunted me. So it's the same with the sleeve thing. All right, so here we go. I've got my two sleeves here and we're going to put them, we're going to um, put the, oh my gosh, let's see. We're gonna roll this back. Pretty sure it's a little easier if you do this. Roll this back, let me focus here. And then, do I want my sleeve inside here? Yeah, I think I want my sleeve. I'm trying to decide if I want my, um, which side I wanna sew on. So here, here's my seam, here's my seam. We'll put those together like that. And of course I don't have a pin here. Gosh darn it. <laughs> really, Melinda? Oh man. That's pretty funny. I bet people loved that though. It was it live? All right, so I'm just gonna stick, I'm actually gonna stick this one into here because it's already folded back. But I'm still paranoid. I'm still paranoid. I'm just gonna do what mean, what's logical to me. That's really what's important. <laughs> like I said earlier.
you kind of know if um, you're on the right track because your seams are going to line up. And I'm pretty sure they wouldn't if you were off because this section here is smaller than this section here, right? So let's look at that. So you are my witness, right? Okay, let's flip it over and do that one. Okay. I don't mind making mistakes live on camera. Uh, that's not, it's just more the headache <laughs> of taking out the stitches on this linen. I can barely see my stitches. Okay. I'm only doing my seams because that is enough. It's such a small little area. It's pretty, you know, it's pretty easy. Okay, let's do it. Well, here's a pin. Oh, it was recorded. Oh, that's great. I'm glad they left it in. I'm always trying to figure out people who do, um, uh, online classes, how they're doing it. Like, are they hosting the video on their website? Are they doing something like a teachable thing? You know, you can never tell. All right, we're going to sew this at your seam allowance, whatever you're using. It'll feel a little awkward. Just keep all your raw edges lined up. You don't have far to go. If your um, sleeve isn't matching circumference wise, like one's a little smaller or bigger, if it's not a big amount, I would just taper one, the one that's bigger or let out the other one. If you've top stitched, I top stitched a lot. I don't know if that was in the pattern or not, but if you top stitched a lot and you have to undo it, you know, it's kind of how the cookie crumbles, but um, you know, that's, it's okay to just fix the taper, you know, so that you don't have a tuck in this seam. You can even compare it to the other sleeve to understand which direction to go because if um, one, you know, like if the other sleeve fits the bigger amount, then let out the smaller amount and vice versa. If the other sleeve is the smaller size, taper it. You don't really, I know you're probably thinking, I don't want to do that. <laughs> I just want to be done. But the thing is, your sleeves feeling different might annoy you. So it just depends on how much it's off. You might even be able to just ease it in if it's not much. Okay. So one of the things they say also is to, um, like on that little fold line that where we ironed right there, tack the seam allowance up. I'm going to wait until the very end and I'm just going to do this through the outside somehow probably, or probably from the lining of the inside, mainly because I just want to make sure it all hangs right before I tether it right there. So I'm going to wait. Okay, so now we're going to do, well, let's turn this, um, let's, we turn this right side out, I'm pretty sure. I'm going to turn this right side out. And this is pretty easy because you're just going to pull your sleeve. Let's see, turn it right side out. And then when you turn your, um, your sleeve, out, it will pull your lining right into it. <clears throat> okay. 
trying to keep keep it all under the camera. See like this, and then pull it. Roop. Definitely has sound effects. Oh yeah. Make sure it's not twisted right meow. <laughs> Do not go forward without knowing if it's twisted or not. Mine is not twisted. I wish my lining was a little slicker, you know? Okay. Whoop, whoop. That's looking like a jacket. All right. So now, we're going to finish the bottom facing. I wanted to see if I need to turn the jacket inside out or not, but we don't do that quite yet. So this fold line where, uh, so this right here, we'll start on the right front since that's what they do the order. <clears throat> and I'm pretty sure, it, yeah, the right front is L, the piece number L. And you um, are going to fold it along this zipper edge right here. I didn't finish my seam all the way to the bottom. So I'll do that now. I think I was trying to leave it open for later just to make sure. Get closer, please. There you go. So we're going to, uh, it's going to be kind of hard for me to get by this. I probably should have left the 5 8 inch seam because of this big chunky stop there. I may have to hand sew that later on. So now we're going to fold it along that zipper edge right there. And we're going to sew straight across the bottom here. And we're going to go up. I think the whole facing and we stop at that seam. Do we turn maybe, oh yeah, we're going to do it on this side. I think we're going to, yeah, 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 yeah. So on this side here, this is my right front. Thanks Allison. I know I'm so excited <clears throat> on this, on the right front here, we have this lining that we've sewn down, remember when we left that three inch opening? And because I ironed it for the understitch, this is naturally folding back on itself like this. And you're going to leave the lining free right here, but you are gonna keep this folded back on itself. And we're gonna stitch straight across the bottom here. Now, before I do this, I'm actually gonna check my center front length. I can't really change this side because of how close it is to the zipper thing. So I think I'll sew this one and then I'll check the other one. I don't even know if I can get by that thing. Oh, I'll put my zipper foot in. <laughs> I have, this is my like zipper foot. I think I have to unscrew this a little bit more because this one's chunkier. Okay. Now this is a right angle right here and you really want to make sure you have a right angle because you're, you're going to want a nice point down there at the bottom. So just remember that part. Kind of wish I could see that uh, zipper stop. And I, I like to try and make sure all this is nice and flat like this because this is how it's supposed to lay. So I just make sure everything's nice and like perpendicular and flat and all that. Keep the lining out of the way. And we're just going to go straight across this bottom. I think they call this the facing like that. See that? And here's my hem. Here's my loose lining. Here's my point that's going to be at the bottom. It looks roughly like the picture. Okay, we're going to clip this corner right here. 
I'm not going to be too aggressive because of the linen. And I'm going to check my point now. See if there's anything I can do to make it better before I am done sewing the spot. See that <laughs> this Angora bunny <laughs> stuff is just everywhere. I'm being a little tentative because of the linen. I can't really get this side as good because of that stop there. There we go. Okay, so now we have our point there. Right, our flap is hanging free. Make sure you didn't catch your flap in there. Maybe I could have done it a little higher up. See, this is where my ironing fold is right here. Yeah, actually I do want it higher up. You want it to, you want this to be higher than your your flap. So I'm going to do that some more. I'm really going to need to get close to that zipper stop there. We'll try. So your goal is actually this flap right here. This flap right here, you want this to be at the most the same length. So you, you do need to kind of choke up on this a little bit right here, but I'm gonna pull this out of the way too. I don't wanna catch it by accident. You don't wanna catch it. So I don't think I can get much closer to this zipper, um, uh, the stop down here. So I'm gonna just sew and then hand sew that probably. So where do I think that is? Can I see it better on this side? Yeah. Oh, but I do want to pull this this way. Okay. I can see the the fold a little better on this side. I could try it on this side. Let's see. There's my flap right here. See, here's my flap. So let's um I'm gonna chalk it. Just nice and flat. Oh, come on, be more precise than that, please. <laughs> I didn't really want to be precise, but I want to be there. So now I'm going to pull this flap away. And I'm just going to kind of fold it up out of the way and pin it. Tell me if you need me if it shows okay. Ouch, she's Louise. That's a little better, huh? So I just pulled, folded this flap out of the way here and then I'm gonna trust this higher chalk line I need to get this pin out a little further in because it was pushing up against this edge right here. Get all this. I don't want to get any blood on my pocket lining. <laughs> I have this edge still turned back right here. If I kind of want to release a little bit. I'm just going to take this out a little bit. Do I want to do that? Yeah, I'm going to take this out a little bit. It seems okay, but I just want to kind of start from scratch. There we go. Just a little bit. Okay, got all this nice and flat. It's right here. Why couldn't I see my stitching through here? Hmm. I'm second guessing myself. Wait a second. Here's the top of my, yeah, here's the top of my thing right here. I'm kind of, this is something I really like to get right because I don't like it when the under flap hangs below the flap, you know, sticking out at the bottom. And we don't get to sew this like 15 times to practice this finishing step. So it's worth it to just kind of just figure out how yours is going to hang, you know? Where's my flower there? 
I'm gonna go right here. Here's my zipper pull. And at least I have some, you know, witnesses to how hard I tried. All right, this is about as far as I can go. Right there, because my zipper stop is in the way. So that is something I'll have to finish better later. Let's check it out. So see, I'm gonna have a little hole right here. But we're gonna be able to turn this in there. Maybe I should take out some of those stitches so that it relaxes better. You see, because it's already been sewn right there. But look at that. That'll be so much nicer now because it's lining up with the bottom of my zipper teeth. That actually went better than I thought it would. I'm gonna pin this so that I remember it's open. <laughs> There's nothing like the um, glow of a finished project to remember, oh, I forgot I didn't do that <laughs> later on. All right, so that's a little better. See, there's my flap right here, and it's lining up with that edge a lot better. I could probably do a little more, but I think I'm gonna leave it right there. All right, so let's pin that so we remember. Okay, so let's do the other side now. But let's check the how it lines up. Oops, sorry. I guess I don't pull, I don't, I guess I don't, why did, oh. there we go, that's okay, that's kind of weird, okay, We're gonna zip it up and then we're gonna see how everything's lining up. This kind of stuff makes me so nervous because I'm so scared I'm gonna see something I don't like. Right? Ooh, it feels like a jacket. Okay, that that's pretty good, look at that. Okay, so then we need this side over here to line up with that Basically the zipper tape, so that's our guide. Okay, goody, goody, goody. How's my yoke looking? And up here, this is looking okay too. As long as I stay with these raw edges, I think everything's gonna line up okay with the hood right here. You can't change this later. Um, I didn't really shorten it, Allison. I just decided, like, I wasn't paying attention to the fact that I needed it to line up with the flap on the first time I sewed it. And then I went, wait a minute. And so, um, and I noticed that where my stitch line was, was a little bit under where that one and a half inch ironing mark was. So that also reinforced the fact that, wait a minute, I need to go up higher. Really, I just didn't sew it correctly the first time because I was nervous about getting too close to the zipper stop. So I just sucked it up and did it correctly, <laughs> basically. <laughs> okay. This side will be a little easier now that we kind of know. So now this side here, this is your M. I can't remember what piece they call this, but this was your M. And this is your left front. So remember how I was just reinforcing this ironing right here on this? So that was a notch down here. It's about an inch and a quarter away from the seam here, this fold line. You're gonna fold it there, right sides together, like this. Keep the zipper pointing that way. Line up these raw edges, we're gonna do the exact same thing, and we're gonna keep this actually turned this way. This little edge 
turned there. Okay, so let me pull down the, the camera as well. Perfection is the enemy of the good. I have never heard that before. <laughs> the enemy of the good? What does that mean? <laughs> the enemy. I like it. I'm definitely not a perfectionist. I think you guys all know that. <laughs> I, I sacrifice quality sometimes for speed. I know that. But at the same time, like, if, and, and, and it's true, like, if I weren't sewing in front of you, sometimes I do even speedier tactics. And sometimes I take my time and do a much nicer job. But that's not zippy enough for a live stream, too. So, really? Oh, really? Oh, that's interesting. You touched the book. All right, so here's that fold line I reinforced, right? So we're going to fold it along there. Line up these edges. It wants to not fold right on that. And uh, getting by this little stop is a lot easier. I might be able to just do that, you know. So, here it is right here. Even if I can do up to it and then... Can sew the rest of the way. I'm actually, I just pulled the zipper toward me just now to get it out of the way. And I'm going to sew, see here it is. Let's get nice and close. Oh, okay, Ray. <laughs> Rules for radicals. Oh, I like it. Okay. So you see this zipper is normally going to push that way when it's done, but I just pushed it away from where I'm sewing so that I can get close to that spot. And then I'm gonna push it the other way when I get to it. But I'm keeping all the seam allowance over here, like that. And now I'm gonna push it if I can. There we go. all is nice and lined up I'm kind of straightening this out down here this is you know this edge right here of this um, under flap the piece M keep all this straight you really want more right angles and this is kind of a tricky area I've seen a uh, if you draft you can draft this down here where you don't have to worry about any of this at all there's a cutout and um, you sew your seam allowances I'm really oversimplifying that but um, there's a way that you don't have to do any hand sewing and you don't have to do any guesswork and there's not this little hole right here there's a whole way to do it and you know it's it's pretty interesting because you would sew this fold it up like this and, and then you have the seam and the whole thing works out. It's pretty cool. All right, let's see how this looks before I trim it. Not bad. It got a little push distorted right there because I was pushing it back and forth, but I think that's going to lay nice and flat. All right, so let's trim this little corner here. Get that bulk out of there. And now we're going to do our bottom seam, right? Yep. So now I'm going to page 23 and we're going to do that bottom seam. Unfold. Ensure the lining seam allowance is folded in on either side, pinned into place. All right, ensuring the ensuring lining hem seam is folded in and caught in stitching. All right, all right, we're gonna put this inside out. <laughs> I want to make sure I can do that. Inside out. 
put your hem seam together. Understand the unfold part where they said that unfold and then keep folded. Like this. This is actually not folded. Because you we understitched it. So it's actually not folded right here. So I'm not sure why they said to do that. <laughs> so let's see. We're going to line this up. You see how this edge right here is, you see how this edge right here is turned back to there? Um, you want this lining to line up to where that's lining, this edge right here is lining up right here. See that? So you see how this is about, for me, it's like three eighths of an inch away from this raw edge and this raw edge. So this raw edge right here is three eighths of an inch away from this raw edge. In other words, I wouldn't just line this up raw edge to raw edge. I'm going to line it up as it, this edge right above that bottom edge there like this. Pretty sure that's correct, but I'm going to double check. It's going to feel funky. This whole thing right here feels really funky. Let's see how it lines up to my side seam. <laughs> it's a little bit bigger, but that's my, my linen. <laughs> I'm gonna have to uh, ease that in there, most certainly. All right, I'm gonna go around to the other side seam. That was a long distance back there. Lining up my seams, not the stitching. Oh, you're moving another bookcase today? That's why you touched it. <laughs> Let's see if I can turn this. Can I turn this? Uh, well, we're gonna have to. We're gonna have to remember that we need to hand stitch that later. So same thing, you see how this turned back edge here? I wanna line this up. Cause essentially, you know, you're pretending like this seam right here is sewn. Cause you're gonna hand sew that shut later. My zipper's kind of stiff, so it's kind of resisting me doing this. But I'm not turning back my lining. Maybe that's a mistake, but I'll be able to fix that later. Oh, this is the wrong seam. No wonder. There's a center back seam. No wonder. Okay. All right. Oh, Toledo Philly. Let me double check that, that little fold back it says unfold the pressed jacket hem and align the lining and jacket together matching seams will look a little out of the outer corners since the lining is shorter than the jacket but everything will make sense once checkers turn right side out oh, I'm sure the lining seam allowance is folded in on either side pin into place maybe you do maybe you like fold it in how because I kind of want this to lay like that. I mean, you could fold it back like this and then your seam allowance is just, see the difference is this is what they're telling me to do. This is what I think they're telling me to do. But my, my uh, lining seam allowance is not like that because we understitched it. You see that? Twists like that. So um, 
And you're going to sew this little seam shut. I think just leaving it open might be a little better, but we'll see. We'll learn on mine. How's that? I don't mind learning on mine. This linen can take it. <laughs> we'll see. <laughs> okay. So sew at your seam allowance. Uh, I need to, my regular presser foot though. There's just not enough purchase onto the fabric of this foot. It'll be too slippery and inaccurate. If you want a demonstration of that, just watch my zipper fly video where I sew the whole thing with a zipper foot because I don't switch and I should have. I just switched. I should have switched and edited that out, but I didn't edit then. So I was too nervous to. And um, it's like the, I can't get really good curved stitching because I'm using my zipper foot. <laughs> This is your last step in bagging the lining, just in case you're like ready for this process to be done. This is it, except for some hand sewing. And then we're gonna attach the hood. And the way the hood is sewn on is why we couldn't have sewn all this clean and pulled it through the neck. I know I silenced my phone. You heard that, didn't you? Weird. My sleep number bed really needed to tell me how poorly or good I am sleeping right now. Okay, I'm pulling all this, these raw threads to the seam allowance so that it looks nice when I'm done. I'm just kind of looking at this whole distance and it does sew across all the way so I don't have to worry about easing in or anything just a little bit on the fronts and if I had sewn it um, lining up to that that notched edge it would have been harder so that wasn't that wasn't my issue as far as why my fronts are a little bit bigger probably just some little sewing discrepancy or one of my seam allowances or something. I noticed that um, I didn't use a full 3 8 when I attached one of the zippers and that could be it as well. So it's not too bright for you guys, right? Let's get rid of this little thread here. One of my least favorite things about wearing a raincoat is how cold and crinkly they are. So I'm pretty excited that this will actually feel soft when I put it on, you know. All right. Oh, Ray, thank you. Yes, I'm going to attach the hood. I'm not going to do it the way they do in the instructions. I hope that's okay. I think my way is a little easier. Thank you, Ray. <laughs> the noise reminded you. <laughs> Let's make sure I silence my phone next time then. It's nice of you. <laughs> Little flowing corgi. I like to look at that one. Okay. So. Just re reading through here. I've read all this. Well, I'm making sure. Pull the underarm seams outside the jacket. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Rest seam. Wait, I know I got you. Okay, yep. All right, yeah. Well, good. Let's see how I did. Because it doesn't feel like it's going to turn right side out to me right now. Does it to you? <laughs> but it does. All right, phone. Oh, you know what? That might be Twitter. I have Twitter notifications on even if it's silenced because of fire stuff. There's not fire notifications. We get them still right now, but it's not uh, dangerous stuff. You know, it's just like, you know, a car or whatever. There's other things that get on fire, not our area. 
Okay, so I don't want to pull this out too much. This is my little corner that I need to hand stitch because of my... Oh, no, this isn't it. This is actually my stitched one. That's fine. Look at that. Hubba hubba. Looks pretty good. So you can see... Yeah, I'm really glad I left that raw edge there because see how it looks there? Let's get rid of these threads here. But you see now that this th this fabric is actually under there and it'll make it so much easier to hand sew. And look at that. I'm happy. Let's see. Okay. See how this one looks. I'm trying to be really careful because that's that's that this is the side I hand sew. Some threads. A little bit more of a tuck here. So you will have a little bit of a like this, this little pleat here, and you're supposed to have that so that when you're wearing your jacket, it moves around. So there we go. So my pleat's a little bit deeper on this side, and that's okay. It's more important that this all right here was a nice straight edge that lined up under my flap. It looked better when we zipped it up, huh? Which is good, right? So there we go. This is my um, back stitch thread right there. So then you just need to hand stitch this shut here when you're all done. That's how that looks. Um, the thing you want to make sure is your lining's not hanging below your jacket, you know, stuff like that. So now's a good time to check it out. Well, let's see. So yeah, see my, um, I'll pull my, <laughs> my cuffs. So it does feel like the um, where I ironed the jacket, it's hanging a little beyond that. <laughs> Nancy. Feels really good. Mm -hmm. Should we zip it? I was like, where's this raw fabric? It's the uh, casing we still have to stitch down through all the layers. <gasps> Look, it looks so good. I'm using the, cam the camera as a mirror. Sleeves feel really good. Like the fabric's a little grabby on my clothes, but now that it's on, it feels great. It's, I made, remember I swung out my back hip a little bit. Um, and uh, I was just kind of feeling where the lining, what the lining's doing back there. So I feel like this is good. I think we're good to go. My lining's not hanging out anywhere underneath. This looks pretty good. Oh, <laughs> I keep thinking of an overhead camera, but you don't. I'll show you. This is awesome possum. Oh, I took out the back pleat. I forgot to mention that. All right, cool. Let's put the hood on. <laughs> okay. Pleased. I'm really glad I'm gonna have a raincoat I love. The waxing's probably gonna take me a year to do, but hey. <laughs> okay, so uh, I picked out a little piece of fabric for the hanging loop. Uh, this project has made me painfully aware how little purple, and especially like lavenders that I have in my stash. So I'm just gonna sew this 
in a tube since I don't have um, the right color thread on. Oh, thanks, Adina. Yeah, I love navy blue on me. I think that was a good choice, you know. Reds look good on me too. I almost went with a red raincoat. They had this fabric. What was it? I can't remember now. I love it when, um, you know when you're like, oh, what fabric should I pick for something? And you really spend a lot of time on certain projects for that. And then you think, oh, Gosh, am I going to regret not getting the other choice? I'm really glad I forgot the other choices. It means I made a good one, you know? All right, so this is my little hanging loop. And I'm going to... I'm going to... So uh, one of the things that they give you in the instructions to do uh, also that I did not is uh, go through the top of your jacket and then you're going to put a little chain of stitches between your lining and your um, jacket. They don't really tell you a whole lot about that in the instructions. And it's just to kind of tether the lining to your coat. Um, I'm not going to do that. I don't really find it to be a big deal. If it, if it is, I'll just probably do, put a little tack there. Uh, the other thing was I didn't do tacking up the lining to the seam allowances here and I'm not gonna worry about that either. I'll just deal with it and it ends up becoming an issue because honestly, it's really just because I'm live streaming right now and I don't want to take the time to stay here and fuss with, I'd have to make sure the whole jacket is laying perfectly um, and, and laying so that I get that those little tacks in the right spot because <clears throat> what I have found with doing those little things, they're really nice touches. But if you get them wrong, you might be pulling the jacket like you might get it so that the jacket's doing something like this all the time. So it's really important to get those things just in the right spot. The chain stitch is a nice loose chain of stitches so that you don't have to get that perfect. But this one you kind of do. And I have notoriously get my sleeves a little wonky, so I'm not going to do that. So really, Beverly? Huh. You gotta shuffle it. Is yours like this? So I can get the other one to work for me. I think it's just a personal. Maybe that other style would work for you, Beverly. This one. Mine's still in the package. I put it back in there. I should do this as a giveaway. This thing was $13 and I never use it. Plus, I don't want six things to do this one thing. But I, people love this and I see a lot of people use it and it's amazing. I just couldn't get it to work. And it's me. It's not that. Yeah, right, Ray? Exactly. Yeah, so I think getting those tacks, Ray, if you want that, your jacket might be different than mine. So, um, all right, so let's see here. So let's line up these edges up here. Everything's so fuzzy. <laughs> The linen edges are so fuzzy and, and like soft. <laughs> so now I didn't remove any of my zipper teeth right here. You can tell they're going up past my seam allowance. So this is something I'm going to have to be really careful about. Uh, but hopefully you don't have to deal with these little teeth right here. I'm going to treat this like I do on a jean zipper and be really careful navigating around it. I don't have luck removing teeth. And um, that's just one of those things. I just have never had any luck removing the teeth. I tried and tried once and I just couldn't get them to budge at all. So I, I just do go around it really carefully. I broke a needle once doing it, but just once. So this is my weird little neck over here that's kind of dropping down because of the bias. But now we're going to tell it from now on you need to be in this neck seam. All right, so um, I'm going to, I think we're gonna stay stitch this whole edge. Yeah. I'm gonna do the hand sewing down there off camera too, just so you guys know I skipped that step. <laughs> and then we're going, and I'm gonna put my little loop turner in, or my, my loop turner, my loop. 
Nice big loop. I want to iron this. I was going to skip it, but I'm going to iron it. <laughs> difference when it's nice and flat. Oh, I'm so excited. So Saturday, I'm going to uh, do the snaps, the casing, and waxing. And I will hand sew that shut by then, and uh, we'll see it in all her glory. Woo woo. And then that might be my last stream for a bit. I don't know. I, we're going to see what the setup of this new space is. But I'm going to work really hard on being ready to move. Um, I may have some personal things I have to sew for birthday gifts. And I might go live for that. So it won't be like a specific project. It might just be my own personal sewing project. So I'll try and do that with you guys if you want. I'd much rather hang out with you than watch Netflix, you know? So. <clears throat> well, I didn't turn the microphone, but I did swing it a little. I love orange, Adina. No, 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 no. There we go. <laughs> Nancy's telling you, right? You say it's fine. One end has to be sewn shut for mine to work. No, I just hook it on the edge. So, so Beverly, when I do it, I hook my little hook on this edge here and I try and hook it on the edge with the seam allowance. So there's more stability. This fabric is pretty fragile, so it would be kind of tricky to do a lot of it, but I just try and, and it also, I sometimes, if I can, allow extra of whatever I'm turning just in case this gets all munched from the loop turner, I can cut it off. Yeah. Exactly, Nancy, right? <laughs> it is hard to say things. Okay, so let's see. Um, I don't really know what I'm doing, but I find that doing this works. Just kind of, I fold it, and these folds are going different ways, but this always works for me. If I try and make the folds go the same way, it does not line up. Wait, I thought, this, I thought this neck was lined up right here and it's not quite. Let's see. So like, see, if I go like this and then I pull this one under to match it, I get kind of a weird wrinkle. And I never can get rid of this weird wrinkle. You see it? Can you see that little weird wrinkle? Probably not. <laughs> so I just kind of, it's asymmetrical, but no one notices and I'm the one who wears it. I just go like that. I like it to lay flat. All right, so I'm going to stitch around the neckline right now inside my seam allowance. My seam allowance is pretty small. Yours is probably much bigger. We're just putting that stay stitch edge in there so we don't have to worry about all these edges not staying lined up with together. See, I kept saying that about the other style, Beverly. <laughs> so we've been seeing both uh, frogs in our pond lately. I'm so relieved that they're still there. <laughs> Okay, this is my fussy front yolk side because my yolk's on the bias. The bias on the linen on the bias is like, <laughs> it's like wrangling a squirrel. All right. Okay. 
I'm going to trim this flesh and I'm just looking it over, making sure I don't have tucks in there, but this edge is kind of eased right here. I'm a little like this being one notch higher. I really want my necklines to match up. You know, I really want the necklines to match up. So we'll zip it one more time because now it's kind of speak now or forever hold your peace. I mean, this side is a little higher. You see that? So this is gonna zip down here. So let's be honest about that. You know, like this side is a little higher. So um, I'm going to make sure I trim this off a little bit so that I make sure that this whole edge lines up. I won't be able to zip it up now because I'm gonna I'm about to trim off the stop at the top there. Oops. I can't tr uh, trim that that big guy off there, so I'm going to just go one below. I'm not going to slide it off, don't worry. That would be so sad if I did that. I need to look at it from above. You see that little angle right here? I want to get rid of that too. I kind of went up when I trimmed that, so. Remember, if you if you cut your stop off, don't zip your zipper off. I can't help you getting a zipper pull back on a brass zipper. I do remember, Nancy. Did you get those from me? <laughs> yeah, I I uh, I hook it on the from the inside and I wrap it or I mean I hook the edge and I close the little clasp on it okay so this looks better see that okay let's do this Okay, we have our hood. Um, I'm gonna just sew this, oh no I'm not. <laughs> Don't sew that edge. <laughs> You'll be on picking it. <laughs> but I wish I would have put in a stay stitch along this here. Oh really Nancy? Oh, you should just, it's fine. I did give one of those away, that's funny. I can't figure it out. I bet the instructions told me to do this a long time ago. And I didn't. But my uh, linen is a little bit of a bucking bronco. So I'm going to make sure... So the way I like doing things like this, like I do all things, is from the inside to the outside. <clears throat> they don't tell you to do this in the instructions. I'm pretty sure you hand sew an opening closed. I think there'd actually be a way. It is, Walter. It's 10 so-so. Pretty sure. Because they changed it. <clears throat> Oh, Nancy, really? 
Hey, Sydney. We're putting the hood on now. So, um, what you can do, you can do it in the way the instructions have you do it, which would be to sew the, the outer hood to the outer jacket right sides together through all your neckline layers, right? So you'd be out here doing this. And I think you can actually do a chunk, maybe, of your center front with this right sides together like this. That makes you nervous though. Just do it the way they say. And then you leave an opening um, in your lining. Like you're gonna, and then you un understitch it. I, oh gosh, you turn it under and you hand stitch it. I'm gonna, hand, I'm gonna machine sew my whole thing. <laughs> so, and I start on the inside. I'm gonna do the lining to the inside of the garment first. Let's open my jacket up so it's not in the way. I didn't, you know what I didn't check those couple times was that my casing was directly across from itself. We checked that a long time ago, but it is, right? I'm not gonna check that now because <laughs> that ship sailed for me. <laughs> sleeves, wait, order any of the March Needle Sharp sleeves? She has a sleeve box? What? I didn't. All right, so I'm gonna uh, line up this edge to my center front hood right here. And I'm just, I'm not gonna be precise right now. I'm kinda, but I'm just gonna kinda get this on here and go all the way around and then we'll adjust. So I always try and do the beginning and the end. Like this. Sure, Walter. And then I do my center. And these are all my non-negotiable points. <laughs> they call them. Ouch. And then I do in between. Look at that, it's fitting. Do through. Oh, okay, Cindy. Sydney, don't you understand how literal I am? <clears throat> I'm a very literal person. It's terrible. In fact, lots of people think uh, think at first that I'm kind of like dumb because I'll be like, well, what do you mean? Because <laughs> I want to know exactly what they're talking about before I reply. Is this my, this is my, fu of course I have to start on my fussy side. <clears throat> oh well, we'll get it over with. All right, so I'm gonna be really careful going by those teeth. And for getting things like this, I'm gonna get rid of this thread right here. You wanna make sure you get all of your uh, stay stitching in the seam allowance too. So, <clears throat> when I have these little edges, so here's my seam right here, right? You can see that pretty good actually. I try and stack the edge up to that seam. And remember, you need to leave a little bit of room to, for this to wrap around like that. So even having this just slightly behind the seam right there, and then it'll wrap around and be pretty accurate. This makes me a little nervous right here though. This would probably be easier to sew from this side. Maybe this whole thing would be easier to sew from this side. Hmm, probably. Maybe I'll switch my pins around. I think it would be. The hood edge is straighter than the neckline. And what did we learn last time? I thought I figured out some sort of formula. That I like the curve on top? Is that what it was? That's what I'm about to do. Oh, cool, Nancy. I still have the bluette. Bluette, bluette dress. I'm gonna, I've been trying to make a schedule for the year. And I'm not doing it now just because it's kind of summery, you know? Look at all that, I gotta get in there, but I can do it. That's not bad. Okay, let's do this. I kinda want this a little closer. All right, 
it has the camera. It can come down like this. Yeah, we like that, right, Walter? <laughs> okay. That creates a shadow for me. All right, I always do this. I get started and then I clean up my whole space here. Now I'm ready. <laughs> oh, you did, Sydney? Oh, you really like those Tanya culottes, huh? Is that why? I can see my, really, I can see my teeth. Yeah, I guess I can see my teeth. Okay. This is nice. I don't usually get to see the teeth when I'm doing a, a zipper fly. So that's kind of helpful. Piece of cake. Right, Adina? We don't remove those teeth. <laughs> Have you guys ever tried to remove the zipper teeth? I don't know why people just say, just remove the top few teeth. I'm like, with what? I, those things are on there to stay. I thought I was going to hurt myself the last time I tried. I finally was like, uh-uh. Oh, me too, Nancy. Me too. There's been a lot of fabrics coming out right now that I am just trying hard not to buy because... Um, because <laughs> there's always going to be nice fabrics. I don't always have to buy it. it. There's so many more options now that I used to just be like, you know, oh my gosh, that's going to go away. I got to get that right away, you know, and now, um, there's more and more options. So I don't have to feel that way. It's hard to buy it on time. Okay, Sydney online. I mean. That's cool, Sydney. I can't wait to hear what you say about the, t t the Tanyas. Have a good meeting. Yeah, I wish I, that, um, I wish I could actually shop at Blackbird Fabrics. I really like the style of stuff they get. You know? And I've definitely shopped from them a few times online. It's been a while. Okay, so this is a little bit of easing through here. And, you know, I can feel a lot of thicknesses, so I'm just trying to make sure I don't get any tucks. I At least this is the outside of my garment, so even if I do, they're on the inside. They're not a place I can see them. I can just feel them. And it's, I think, on the under yoke. All right, now I can't see my zipper teeth this time, so I gotta be really careful. It's usually just one stitch that I have to worry about. All right, let's open up this hood here. Okay. It's a little high right there. Look at that. I might, I'll probably take this out and drop this down a little bit. Why is that little tuck there? This looks pretty good. Okay, I'm just gonna work on this part right here. This little section. Oh yeah, me too, Nancy. I saw that. I know. I they've had some really good stuff. That, that but yeah, the, those really funny cat prints were great. But you're right, they were in quilting cotton. <laughs> I have gotten to shop there in person, and it is amazing. Their garment selection, fabrics, online just doesn't do it justice. You know. It just doesn't do it justice. This isn't near the, t oh, it is near the teeth. I wish I would have left those few stitches there so I didn't have to do those again. <laughs> My luck will run out. I hate taking out the stitches on the interfacing side. It's kind of like, which evil do I want to deal with? 
the one where I can't see the stitches on this side or this side where I might pluck the interfacing. I don't, I rarely take seams out like this because it creates more threads. That's why I don't ever do it this way. And you can cut your fabric really easily. Okay, let's do this a little bit nicer. We ain't failing now. Okay, get everything arranged. <laughs> it's okay, noon. <laughs> it's so satisfying, I'm glad. Yeah, me too, Nancy. It's exactly what I have here. Yeah, I tried with pliers and nothing happened. <laughs> All I got was hot and bothered. <laughs> All right, so my uh, stopping point is right here. So I need to go, let's get rid of these threads here. To go all the way up to here. I feel like I need to put my, yeah, here we go. It feels like I'm staying on that quarter inch line, but I must be dropping down lower on the hood. I don't want my hood to pull, you know? I know you can't tell what I'm feeling. I'm just feeling lots of lumps, and so I'm nervous. I don't want tucks. Okay, where's my teeth? My teeth are right here towards the end. Okay. I'm going to do this a little. I'll do it one more time here. So I make sure my stitches are lining up. All right. <laughs> it, I, I got a little bit back. Okay, cool. All right, that looks good. Okay, so now our last seam. Oh, I can, they're just in Canada, that's all. Oh, I can, I have. And I like supporting um, people near to me and local. Okay, so we're on the right side of our garment. And the reason I like doing this, I always say this, is so that now at least you can control how it's going to look, you know? Um, I'll probably switch to cream. See, my, my tricky thing is that it's navy blue to here, and then I need to switch to cream thread. So that's gonna be a little tricky for me to do, but not impossible. All right. So make sure you don't have any bubbles in your hood, you know, like as far as like um, the fabric needs to be flush, right? But hopefully you sorted that out when you, um, you know, did your neck edge there. <laughs> hey, Melinda, how's it going? Oh my God. <laughs> That's good, Ray. bent pin. How is that still there? I'm not impressed with these pins that I bought. The last box of quilting pins I bought were just so stout and I had them for years. This new box, nah. I buy them because they're nice and stout, but these are not. You can hand stitch this, by the way, if this makes you really nervous, but um, 
I think you can sew it too. So right here is where I need to stop with the blue thread. Right here. I've never done that before where I have to like change. Okay, apparently my phone is not muted. Melinda, your 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 non-hair cut is really cute. <laughs> I don't know how to say that. <laughs> your your no hair do. <laughs> you wear it well. Ooh, Melinda. I feel like if you're wondering that, you're feeling pressure to do the works in progress. Right? We support whatever you want to do. <laughs> uh, it really helped that I stay stitched that the edge for, you know, I mean, you want to do that anyway, but it's nice that it's just turning along that stitch line on the hood. Remember I did that right before we started? Yes. Yeah, exactly. And your mom liked the Sapporo coat you made her, right? Thread folder. Oh, Beverly, you got the thread folder. Neat. <laughs> I have one of those. Not that one, but I do like it. It's kind of crazy how uh, many different cream color threads there can be. You know, stuff like that. So now uh, I do have to, I still have teeth going through the neckline. I can't forget that. I did that once um, on jeans on my final pass, like as if this was the waistband, I was doing the final pass and it, and I locked out. And I remember thinking, whoa, I didn't remember I need to do that. Oh, sorry. Oh, cool, Melinda. I don't like my jacket falling off the table here. I'm so glad she liked it. And now you're thinking about making one for yourself. It's nice you already had the chance to make one. It's so that you have every uh, thread, a sample of every thread color. And then that way you can pick accurately by ordering it. So it's like having a swatch kit. <laughs> right, Nude Sky? I like this way. I feel like this is the least stressful way. I mean, it, I think the first few times I was like, you know, is it crazy that I decided to do it on the outside? Um, but I can control. This is the last place I'm sewing. I can control how it looks. All right, let's just make sure my hood looks like it's laying flat everywhere. Look how nice that looks. So glad I went with the lilac. I bought this at Hearts too, so that's great. Okay, um, I need to mark where to stop sewing the navy blue bobbin. So we'll do this right there. We'll put a red pin here like this. Stop! Red means stop. I love how this one's green. <laughs> green does not mean go here. It means stop. Okay. Yeah, exactly. Okay. So I'm just going to do this little front section first, and then I'll switch to the cream thread. Hmm, you know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna start here, and then I'm gonna go around the perimeter of my hood because I don't like start and stops right here at this corner. I'm kind of funny about that. 
I feel like the things I'm funny about are okay though. <laughs> so I'm gonna start here. You just need this fold to go just past your first stitching line. It doesn't matter if you nail it on the back side now because it's on the inside. You don't have to worry about it. I mean, it's nice if it does. And when your jacket is unzipped, this little spot right here will show, you know, because it's going to like open out a little bit. You could probably ask them about the sumo fabric or call them directly. There may be even a chance that they have it in store and just not online. Ooh, I may have just broke my thread. Oh, I didn't. Okay. I thought I like grazed the uh, tooth. You know what I haven't done though? I haven't changed my bobbin in so long. And I know it wasn't a full bobbin. Hmm. So I'm just doing the perimeter, perimeter of the hood. better to have enough bobbin to get to here, Phoenix. <laughs> Come on, let's make a deal. Make it work for me. Make it work. I haven't seen any signs from the sewing fairy. I'm watching for them. She hasn't tried to tell me anything. I really wish I wouldn't have stopped on that curve. I always say never stop on the curve and I just did that. Okay. There we go. Using my all to kind of, I'm kind of snugging it up. That's why I'm kind of fussing with it. Mother trucker. That's pretty much the worst place I could have run out, but okay, Phoenix. I was literally giving you a pep talk at that moment. Sure. Okay. I know how it is. Let me load up my bop and winder. Oh, I love having a start stop right there, don't I? I just love it. Oh, Melinda, God, right? I'm gonna catch up with chat. I'm, right, I'm just going to here with the blue thread and I switched to cream. So I'll check in just a second, the chat. Kinda wanna be a little closer. One, uh, maybe I should have pivoted there. Oh well. Okay. All right, where's my zipper teeth? They're, they're right here. Okay. I'm like fast approaching. Oh, there, there they are. Okay. I feel them now. I need more space. One good thing about dark colors is uh, bobbles in your sewing don't show up as bad, you know? It's so like thick here, I wanna make sure. It's not too thick at all. 
I just want to feel, make sure I can feel any layers that are sneaking up. I wouldn't want the lining to like kind of bubble up, you know, kind of fold up there. All right, so let's see if I can um, switch my thread color now to the cream. Uh, Hearts is in uh, Santa Cruz, California, and it's H-A-R-T-S. See you, Malin. Night. <laughs> nice to see you. <laughs> I have had that happen, Melinda, and I do not blame you one bit wanting to cry. Okay, I need to take my work out, of course, because I need to sew a little bit before I go on. Those big bobbins are pretty cool. Ah, I knew that was going to happen. I was cheating. You know, when you're like a few inches away from being done. Done, done. And air sewing. You don't hear, does your machine not make a sound? Like, I can kind of tell. This machine is actually the hardest machine I've ever had to be able to tell. I could definitely tell on my old industrial. I could tell on Rayanne's too. It's a little wiggly right there. Okay. Get you and you over here. Everything nice and flat. I think I could be closer to the edge right now, though. folded there. Oh, that's the uh, hanging loop and my label. It just looked so puffy right here. I was like, oh no, what's that big thickness? I wish this was closer, but I'm right-handed. <laughs> Do any of you have a machine with a really wide space between the head and the needle? I was just talking to Kirby last night about that. She's wanting more space there. And uh, so she compared, we compared uh, machines and because I have the, me the measuring tape here, she could tell mine was about nine inches. I wonder if it really is. It looks like it's actually a little more. Um, and hers is six. Okay. All right, moment of truth. Let's see how it looks on the other side. Oh, I got onto the navy right here. So I'll probably fix that. This looks pretty good right here. I got the, oh, I have a little bit of white right here. All right, so maybe I'll take that. How did I get that spot wrong? That's kind of funny, huh? I was so methodical in moving that, where marking where I start and stop there. That's pretty funny. Over here, I got pretty good, and my navy is one stitch past, or like a half. But right here, which means I can just take this little section out and do it. And then make sure that um, I'm uh, maybe pulling it down a little bit more. Or going up higher. That's what it is. But all in all, it looks pretty good. Yeah. Oh, this doesn't look good right here, though. I want to fix that. Okay, so I have a few bobbles. But that's not too bad. 
Here's my back stitch on top here. I got my edge stitch around the hood. All right, so I'm gonna take this out right here on this side. While I still have the cream on, we'll fix this part. And I'll fix the other ones by Saturday, just a couple. And then I can put my snaps on. The snaps went really good though when we did that, you know? I feel like when we did the ones on the pocket flap, better than rivets. What I don't like about putting on rivets is the mystery factor of how much you should trim off of the post, you know? Yeah, the throat space, Melinda. Five and a half, and you quilt all the amazing stuff you quilt? Wow. You're amazing. I wonder what my home machine is because um, it was it was kind of geared towards quilters. You know, it was like the patchwork edition. They're about six. Oh, hmm, run of the mill. Okay. Try not to grab those those linen stitches. You know. Do you want me to keep doing this or do you want me to just do this by Saturday? <laughs> I know this isn't exciting. I was, it was funny because I was thinking, I don't know what I was thinking about, but I, I started thinking about like, oh gosh, I get to finish my jacket. And um, I was thinking about like, I'm feeling really confident about it. I'm not really worried about it. I feel like it's all gone together really well. Um, we did a lot of prep in the pattern stage and everything. And then I was thinking, well, bet the stream, the chat hopes things don't go well because it feels like that's when we get the most out of like figuring out <laughs> what to do, like how to fix things and things. I know you guys don't want me to fail. <laughs> From across. <laughs> So yeah, it's kind of funny. I was thinking like, it'd be fun a funny thing that, oh, I think I was thinking about how someone had something really funny in their, their bio, the, the way they described what they did. And I was thinking, oh, that'd be funny. Cause I feel like in some ways people are here for the drama of the sewing, you know, like they want the drama. And I was like, that's pretty funny. Um, when you think about it, it is really interesting though when someone makes a mistake, you know, and they have to fix it. I think that's great with everything. Okay. So that means I need to go this way more. I'm gonna go from this side this time because I feel like um, I do better with my sewing this direction because I'm used to it. So if I need to go up higher onto the um, hood here, I want to make sure I get onto the hood so my cream bobbin thread shows on there. What that tells me is that maybe I was kind of, remember how we were talking about like I was over rotating when I was top stitching along the side of the zipper and it kind of pulls all of this, you know, over. I think that's what I might have been doing. So I need to make sure that I'm pulling this down really well so that all the fabric is up here and then that way I know my stitching is gonna land on the hood, you know? And then if you are nervous about it, you could stick a pin through and see where is my needle going to land. So let's see here. Am I on track if I do that? Barely, look at that, I'm in the ditch. So I need to do more. That's so funny how it is a seam, you know? So maybe what I need to do is allow for a little bit more of the fold hanging lower, but stitch higher. I don't really like doing that. <laughs> Five and a half, okay. Hmm. 
it's not something I've ever thought about because I don't do quilts in, until I was doing certain things and I'm like, oh my God. Don't you love how I'm just like, I'm not sure where we're stitching, but I'm just gonna go for it. I'm gonna make sure, I really need to make sure that my needle is further to the left of the seam than it has been. So let's try this. I'm gonna pull my fold down a little lower I don't think I should really be experimenting on this, but I can't resist. <laughs> the, the linen would get really tired if I just started like going, well, let's try this and let's try that. But you know, I can't help it sometimes. So what I'm doing is I'm just stitching further away from my, from my fold edge. See that? That's kind of risky because you don't want your fold edge to be like end up being kind of loose, you know, like that. But that worked. I got at least all the cream thread. I fell in the, the ditch right there. I am fine with that though, you know. I think I can handle that. At least this isn't up at the center front neck area. So let's get rid of these stitches here. Um, I'm wondering, is my, is my, uh, navy blue still there? I wonder. Did I just go too far? This was where I started, right? Yeah, more space. I'm curious now. I'm going to measure my home machine. I don't think I've ever made a quilt on it I'm trying to think because I really only dabbled in quilting more lately and I've only had this machine for that I did it on my old one too which was the same oh yeah so that's my back stitch and then there would be like, there's like a less than a quarter of an inch right here where there's no stitching. So I'm going to put a back stitch here. And then I'll have to put, when I have the navy blue, I'll probably have to sew that again. If it looks, yeah, it's probably pretty obvious. There's no stitching there. Most people are probably thinking, shoot, I should just hand sew it. But you got to understand, I'm kind of one of those people that's determined to figure out some things like this. And, uh what I don't like about hand sewing is that you have a soft edge there now and it's not stitched down all the way through. And I, I kind of like that firmness, you know? All right. This is this little thread right here. It's kind of random. Where was that? Right here. Okay. Let's get rid of this back stitch thread. And I'm just going to backstitch right here up to there. That's all. Right there. All right. Ooh, I just remembered I have Thai food leftovers. I'm so excited. There we go. That looks actually pretty good. <laughs> I'm surprised. <laughs> I thought I'd have like two rows. You know how sometimes you stitch right on your stitching, but sometimes they're like next to each other. <laughs> Okay, a little bright. Okay, so uh, the only thing I need to do is I'll switch to navy and, oh, fix this little spot right here. 
there's my fold and there's my seam line. It's because when I probably got close to here, I started turning or something and then it just kind of pushed it up. That's really easy to fix, except that it get, puts a back stitch really close to my zipper and really close to my center front, but at least it's navy blue. All right, well, should we look at the whole thing? Let's look at it on, um, on Bear Me. <laughs> I really need a better name for her, don't I? Oh, but I want to try it with the hood. Well, let's see. You guys want to see how it looks on the inside. A few threads out here. That was my bounce of happiness. Oh, it fits good. Yay! Look at my hood fits. Still sticks out in front of my face so that the rain won't fall on me. Is this straight across? It's hard to tell. The, the lenses are such a fish eye. Nancy <laughs> near a cliff. It feels actually really good. I can't wait to press it. And then have the the um, drawstring in it. Woo woo! My sleeves. You can see this iron line. Can you see that? It's a little lower. This is uh, turned out really great. I'm happy. Feels really great. It's really loose back here. I added. I kind of opened up my um, hip, and I'm re really glad I did. I'm so happy. <laughs> it feels really good. Yay. Okay, so Saturday I'll put on the snaps, the casing. I want to do that so bad right now. Um, but I feel like that'll be really good with the snaps. And then we'll start waxing it. That's going to take me forever. <laughs> I can tell. Um, but this feels really good. It looks so nice. I'm happy. It's funny. This sleeve, the, the iron line, is way off. Whereas this one's perfect. So I can't tell if it's just how my sleeve is inside. So what I'll probably do is match up the shoulder seams. Get that thread of my left elbow. Oh, hello. Hello. You can set it there. Sorry, I have that dog fence there. That's all right. I got to... Do you need a signature? No, I just got to verify since you're a business. Yep. That's how we do this now. C19. And then your first initial is? S, as in Sam. Last name is Duffy? Yep. Right. You can just set it anywhere you like. Sorry, I'm live streaming right now. Okay, there you go. Thanks so much. Don't trip over that fence. Oh, sorry about that. <laughs> yeah, sorry. <laughs> sorry, got a package. I think it's my spoon flower fabric samples. Yay! Very excited about that. Thread off my left elbow. This one. Okay. Um, Saturday. Adina, Saturday. I've never done it before. 
Did you ever check out their website and see any of their videos to see how what you thought? <laughs> I think it'll be great because once the um, waist casing is stitched through the lining, that'll offer the stability when I'm like tugging on it by waxing it. Yeah, right, Allison? <laughs> I've locked my door before, too. Um, I have a dog fence. If you guys don't know, I have this dog fence, like a little dog gate across my door when people walk in. You're the, you're, everyone's all... <laughs> um, because uh, I had an incident once of someone coming in. And so the dog fence has been really great because people, they, first of all, they think there might be a dog. And second of all, they don't just barge in. It makes them stop and think, and they don't want to step over it. And the poor guy just almost tripped going in because he's like going at so it's breakneck speed, it's FedEx, you know. So, <laughs> but I have a sign on my door that says, you know, knock first, don't scare me. So, you're so nervous, Adina. Oh, I think it'll be fine. Here's my um my little sample. Let's see how it looks right now. So it's a lot, my coat's going to get a lot lighter in color. See that? I hope I like that look, you know? It's a little tacky when I do this. When I like really squeeze it, I feel it. But when I'm feeling it like this, it feels dry and fine. And I think, um, I think, you know, on other colors, it would be, less noticeable it doesn't get that kind of distressed look that other waxed cottons get and it doesn't get any distressing those are just wrinkles they're not really it's not really like distressing you know so yeah cool yeah so that'll be fun i'm looking forward to it i better take lots of pictures before i wax it cause it's gonna look it's gonna look uh, not as nice, <laughs> I think, like the waxing, but it, I'll get used to it, you know, and it'll be my raincoat, and it'll feel like real fabric, which is great, so, all right, thanks for hanging out with me, that was really fun, I'm really glad that went well, um, I'm Sarah me, and, um, I'll get, see you guys Saturday, and if you see me online again, it'll probably just be being prompt to things I'm sewing personally, just to kind of hang out with you guys, um, and things could change, because I don't, think that space is actually going to be ready for me by March. It's like this domino effect because the place where the place where the other person's going that's in the space isn't ready. So, you know, Thai food. I've been getting pad CU, which is something Brooke taught me to get. And I always want to get something else, but it's so good at this restaurant. It's like a noodle dish. And then I get these, um, like their version of chicken wings, which is, I'm not a chicken wing person, but these are so good. And it's in this like really interesting sauce with peanuts and stuff on it. Nancy's <laughs> like, I'm onto the wine. So, and I have some, I bought some black licorice yesterday. So, <laughs> all right, guys, I'll see you Saturday, 11 a.m. Pacific. And um, we're going to put my snaps on. Now I don't want it to be a raincoat. I just want it to be a coat. No, I'm just teasing. <laughs> I have plenty of coats. <laughs> All right, I'll see you guys then. Have a great uh, rest of your week too, okay?